As Nigeria inches closer to its general elections in 2023, how important are the telecommunications infrastructures to the successful conduct of the polls? Also on the breakfast, Lagos State House of Assembly has passed a motion seeking better protection of female children. This is as the world marked the International Day of the Girl Child. We have a discussion on this ahead. And in all the press, we'll have an in-depth analysis of today's major headlines from the National Dailies. All right, it's uh, great to have you back on The Breakfast Radio on Plus TV Africa. My name is Kofi Bartels, and uh, I will pause for quite an interesting discussion on the program this morning. And I am Messi Bokwa. It's a beautiful day, and it's good to know that you're with us, as always. All right, we'll start things off with a look at uh, uh, the stories that are trending on the social space today. Uh, of course, a lot going on. Uh, we have to talk about Mercy. It's uh, been quite interesting monitoring the discussions. And uh, we'll start things off with uh, some, I don't know why we can call it good news, coming from uh, uh, the United States, uh, Britain, really, um, you know, uh, and the United States of America. Uh, something about Nigeria's uh, artifacts. Um, uh, during the pre-colonial and uh, colonial era, some of the artifacts of uh, Nigerian ethnicities were stolen, you know, and taken away to foreign lands. And these artifacts have been a subject of controversy uh, with some people calling for them to be returned to the country, you know, um, especially, you know, most recently when uh, Queen Elizabeth's uh, death was being marked and the burial activities were on. It was uh, uh, an opportunity to talk about uh, this. And so we'll look at this um, some more in depth as we go. But the culture and information minister, Al Haji Lai Mohammed, who hasn't been speaking too much, has um, urged the British museums to follow the example of the Smithsonian Institution, uh, which on Tuesday returned about 29 uh, Benin bronzes to the Nigerian government at a celebratory event in Washington, D.C. You know, the Smithsonian Institution is a very, very, very um, well-known institution as far as uh, American culture is concerned. And they also uh, curate, you know, the, the culture of uh, other parts of the world. So it's quite interesting to see. The Benin Bronzes, Mercy, are, 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 they're huge, you know. And there's an interview that was aired on the, um, uh, what do you call it, the internet. I think it was uh, by the BBC, one of the British uh, networks, television channels, that uh, interviewed the British culture minister who was asked, will you return the Benin Bronzes to Nigeria? I mean, these are really respected all over the world. And people go to the British museums, the American museums, to look at them. You know, so what Lai Mohammed is saying is that now that the Smithsonian Institution has returned the ownership of the bronzes to Nigeria, um, the British Museum, which is one of the biggest in the world, should also do uh, the same. In fact, Lai Mohammed had a lot to uh, praise for the United States National Museum on African Art, uh, which follows a recent restitution agreement with Germany uh, that included the handover of two Benin bronzes. Um, of course, last year, uh, Mohammed's uh, ministry formally did a request, uh, wrote to these people to return the Berlin artifacts from the British Museum in London. So we have them scattered all over the world. You can see some of them on your screen right now. And uh, it's good to see that the ownership is being returned. The fact they're saying ownership is being returned may mean that they will not be relocated back to the country, but Nigeria will be the ones to officially own them, and probably there will be a share of uh, the revenue that comes from these uh, artifacts. So, so I think you should, you should just go beyond having just a share. There should be some compensation. We're talking about an issue of theft. You stole and you should return it. I mean, what, what would be the compensation? How many years? We need to go back. But it's so much for, you know, integrity and countries that would say, hey, you know, we're very straight, uh, no corruption and what have you. It's, it's really saddening. And it's a good thing, very commendable, that you have uh, the United States returning the looted Nigerian artifacts. And we're hoping that everyone will take cue. As you rightly mentioned, Kofi, we have this thing scattered across. 
It's very saddening. Until Africa wakes up, until Nigeria wakes up to understand that, you know, it has always been what it has been, uh, the fact that we have been exploited as a continent, we have been exploited as a country. We need to sit back and look at it. I, I don't know what has happened or what is happening uh, with these countries that they are coming back to understanding uh, the need to return all of this. But I'm almost getting emotional. I put my emotions in check right here. So I don't begin to shed some tears, but it's, it's sad. Oh, uh, wow. I mean, it, I mean, you, you, you know no, what they say? You know, you know, me, you know what they say? I don't, if you, I just, you know what they say? If you're feeling, you know, don't, don't hold back your emotions. No, I, I, I have to uh, hold I have, I have, I have a tissue you paper to, here. I don't want to tear, but, no, you know, have, thinking have, about it, it, it's a lot for the continent. Yes, yes. yes. You know, it's but, a lot but, for us. But, yeah, and but I mean, I mean, if you want to. No, if you don't do that, don't do that with me. We need to move on. Yeah. We need to move on. Very, very quickly. Yes, All right, so let's move on. So quickly, this is actually not saddening, and I'm sure that I, I don't have any reason to begin to, you know, be emotional this morning. It's a good one. A lot of people think that it's commendable, but others actually think differently uh, because of what has happened over time with our system. And uh, President Muhammad Buhari uh, swore in Justice Ariwala Ulukayo Day as the substantive chief justice of Nigeria. And uh, it, it might just also be interesting to know that Ariwala was appointed a justice of the Supreme Court on November the 22nd in 2011 by uh, the former president, good luck, Jonathan. And so, yes, it, it, it was a great ceremony. It was something that a lot of people have, you know, talked about. But the controversies and the engagement and the thoughts of Nigerians are not different. And they're saying for every, time, every other time we're close to the election year, uh, we have, um, you know, different concerns, uh, the issue of whether or not this is also another justice uh, that will be used to truncate, you know, the electioneering process and what have you. You remember what happened with Walter Noggin, I mean, prior to Walter Noggin and Walter Noggin and all of the system. So all of this for me, I think, is when you get to a point where deficit, there's no longer trust in the system, you begin to experience uh, trust deficits. And that's what's going on. I think that that's why Nigerians are reacting differently. It feels like every action that the government takes, everything that the government does, people take it with a pinch of salt. It's, it's, it's almost every move, whether or not is, I mean, you have uh, the fact that uh, a new chief justice of Nigeria has been sworn in. Would you think that it would be good? It's another error. Uh, it would be an, a beginning of... Uh, uh, another dispensation for the judicial system. But some people are already thinking differently. And that's because of antecedent over time and what people have perceived of the judicial system, especially when you also have the executive uh, being, you know, really involved with the activities of the judiciary. Okay. Um, um, that, in interesting analysis of that, Messi. So let's move on to the third one. Uh, uh, singer Tenny is come under attack, Nigerian musician Tenny. Uh, she calls herself Tenny the Entertainer. Uh, she's been under some sort of attack. Uh, she's been under some some of attack, uh, or people have raised I issues with uh, with her conduct uh, when she received her national award, her national award uh, at the National Merit Award ceremony in Abuja at the um, the conference center, uh, the era. I think that should be the the International Conference Center rather in Abuja. Um, you can see her there. Uh, there's a video showing her walk up to uh, the the president, you know, uh, to the front, you know, and then of course uh, she received the award from the president, and then walked back. And um, some people have said, uh, you know, that uh, she didn't. She showed she disrespected the president. Let's call it that. And uh, she should not have disrespected the president. You know, so people have, have castigated her. Some have, you know, rushed to her, uh, her defense to say that uh, she did nothing wrong. You know, she's been called out for allegedly disrespecting the president. I wish you could have a look at the video. Okay, so let's roll the tape and then let's see if Tenny actually did uh, disrespect Mr. President. Ten knees. 
an idea of what um, uh, transpired there. Um, I'll just read a couple of the comments, maybe one, uh, and then of course I'll, I'll you know, give Mercy the chance to do some analysis on this. Um, this is Abba Bichi. It's a verified uh, account, verified account. Uh, Abba Bichi says Orobo with zero cents, uh, zero cents, you know, even Her Excellency Okonjo bowed down her head as a sign of respect to the president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces, likewise other high-ranking government officials who are you not respect the president. This is disgusting and disturbing. Uh, she now, he now goes on to talk about Yoruba people. I have to read this so that people know exactly what is going on. Yoruba people are best known for their respect for elders, but it got to your turn and you decided to be uh, arrogant. I think uh, we we'll would waste time to read more of the comments. Mm. Mercy, over to you. So, but the thing is, uh, we, we live in a climate, not necessarily a climate. I, I think that uh, everyone is entitled to their thoughts and opinion. Everyone has a right to think whatever it is that they want to think and has a right to believe whatever it is that they want to believe. Uh, I really don't know what, at what point do you describe a disrespect to the president? What exactly? Uh, looking at the video, she got the award, she got to the point, and then she moved away. It wasn't like the president actually put out his hand, you know, for a handshake, and then she ignored it. One would say that's a total disrespect. So I really don't understand where you know, disrespect is. I can't really say what it is because we don't know if there's a yardstick that has been put out, you know, to describe disrespect. It, it, I mean, it's, it, it depends on, you know, every other person. So you have different persons going there, you know, having a handshake, others are bowing and others are having conversation. Uh, you know, different strokes for different folks. That's what it is. It might just also be different for Tenny. And it's quite interesting to note that, you know, in all of this, Tenny hasn't really said anything about what's been going on because, I mean, the conversation has not ended, even after the award, so uh, that's still going on. But she hasn't really, you know, come out to say what really it is. So I, I don't know what we call disrespect. I don't know what, what, if there's a yardstick for that, if, you know, putting out a handshake would mean a respect. But for the fact that she honored, she showed up for that award, is, it's a lot to say. Uh, showing up to uh, collect or receive the award is a lot of respect. If not, one would say that it was disrespectful that she was awarded or she was nominated for an award and she didn't show up. So showing up already, her presence, there's a lot of respect. But I understand where you know people are coming from, different cultures, different folks, and what of you we totally understand and respect all of that uh, but that would be my thoughts on this issue Kofi. yeah um i'll just um because i'm here I'm, I'm supposed to talk about this um it's my job to talk about this i'll talk about it with the the, the story of the garbage truck have you had the the story of the garbage truck mm -hmm. okay so this is the story of the garbage truck uh, somebody was driving on the road in a car going somewhere, let's say to the airport, and then someone drove a truck, garbage truck, and then poured the garbage. You know, garbage truck, how they can pour? They poured the garbage on the path of the car, all right? And the driver stopped. Imagine you're going to the airport now. Stopped the vehicle and got out and started ranting. Why did you pour the garbage on, on the my garbage. path? You know, and uh, the person in the car said to drive a passenger, said, hey, you, you, you can't stop this car. You have to keep moving. All you should have done, uh, said, this is the garbage truck, all right? This is the car. I'm sorry, I have to do this. All you should have done was to just bypass the garbage truck and continue on your journey. You know, bypass the garbage truck and continue on your journey to the airport. That's all you have to do. All right, sorry, I like to use illustrations. So my editor directors are okay with this. Um, so, so that's all you have to do. Um, so, the import of this story, as we say in this part of the world, the moral of the story is that when people, some people moving around with all sorts of garbage in their in their in their lives, you know, all sorts of garbage in their not garbage, garbage, but they have issues. You know, there's a lot of um, there are things that are sitting inside of them. 
They're looking for where to pour it. Okay? They're looking for where to, where to dump it. And what, they could just bring it to your doorstep. They could bring it on your path to a place, a successful place. All you have to do is just jump and pass. It's just jump and pass. That's what we say in Nigeria. Avoid them. Just move on on your way. So I see all of this as some very unnecessary, very unnecessary. Uh, that's why I say the only reason I'll talk about it, because we have to talk about it today. It's important to talk about it. Yes, it is. It's, it's, because, I'm, because, I'm saying, because a lot of persons uh, yeah, are sorry, making Macy, it. I'm, I'm saying that the, the, the reason I'm saying I, I would undignify this with is because, you know, ordinarily for people in the media space, so Tenny, it's a non-issue for her. It's a non why, why are people raising up issues where we have nothing? At all. Yeah. So, Tenny, the entertainer, I hope this gets to you. Please do not dignify this whole unnecessary comment or view or attack with a response. Sometimes people have to do things to trend. If you don't have controversy, how do you trend? So, Tenny should just do this. So seal her lips and continue. The girl did not disrespect the president. At all. She even looked uh, very pleased to be there, shook his hand, greeted him, said something, and he smiled back. 447 people were being awarded, and they were moving them pretty fast. So why? Because the president was not going to stand for the whole day. 447 people. So they wanted them to go for IMC events, Mercy. You want them to go really fast. You want them to move really fast. You know what no, I'm saying? I understand so we, that. We, we have to go. We yes, have to definitely. go. We have to go. We'll, we we'll have be taking a break now. When we return, we dive straight into uh, the national ditties and a look at what they have to say. Please stay with us. <laughs> 